Welcome to OptimalAnesthesia.com. Today, we're delving into the fascinating world of cerebral circulation, with a special focus on anesthesia. We'll explore the anatomy of the brain's blood supply, its venous drainage system, and key clinical considerations for anesthesiologists during the perioperative period. Let's get started. Let's kick things off with the arterial supply to the brain. The brain relies on a constant supply of oxygenated blood, delivered by four major arteries. Imagine two highways, the internal carotid arteries, and two scenic routes, the vertebral arteries, working together to ensure your brain gets the nutrients it needs. The internal carotid arteries are like the main highways, contributing about two-thirds of the brain's blood supply. They branch off to form the middle cerebral arteries, which supply the sides of the brain, and the anterior cerebral arteries, which cater to the brain's front and top. These arteries are crucial for everything from movement to sensory processing. Now, let's take a scenic detour with the vertebral arteries. These arteries join forces to form the basilar artery, which then splits into the posterior cerebral arteries. These arteries are responsible for nourishing the back of the brain, including the occipital lobe, which is essential for vision. All these arteries come together in a remarkable structure called the Circle of Willis. This circular formation allows for collateral blood flow, acting as a safety net in case one part of the arterial system gets blocked. It's like a roundabout that keeps traffic moving smoothly, even if one road is closed. Now, let's switch gears to the venous system of the brain. While it might not get as much attention, it's equally important. Imagine a complex network of rivers and streams draining away used up blood and waste products. The superficial parts of the brain drain into the dural sinuses, which are like large, specialized veins. These sinuses, such as the superior and inferior sagittal sinuses, eventually merge into the transverse sinuses and then exit the skull as the internal jugular veins. It's a sophisticated drainage system that keeps everything flowing smoothly. Now, we'll discuss 10 key implications of the Circle of Willis and how they impact our anesthesia techniques and patient management. Let's get started. 1. Collateral Circulation The Circle of Willis acts as a critical safeguard by providing alternative pathways for blood flow in the event of an arterial occlusion. During surgeries involving major arteries, such as carotid and darterectomy or intracranial procedures, the Circle of Willis ensures the brain continues to receive adequate blood supply, even if some vessels are temporarily obstructed. This redundancy is vital for preventing ischemic damage when normal blood flow is disrupted. 2. Ischemia prevention in scenarios where induced hypotension reduces surgical bleeding, the Circle of Willis plays a pivotal role in maintaining cerebral perfusion. Distributing blood flow from patent arteries to at-risk areas helps mitigate the risk of brain ischemia. Additionally, surgical clamping of arteries ensures that blood can still reach critical brain regions, safeguarding neural function. 3. Surgical planning Understanding the Circle of Willis is integral to planning neurovascular surgeries. Surgeons can devise strategies that minimize the risk of ischemic events by ensuring that blood flow through collateral pathways is maintained. Preoperative imaging to assess the completeness and functionality of the Circle of Willis can inform decisions on surgical approaches, timing, and techniques, ultimately enhancing patients' safety and surgical outcomes. For aneurysm management, the Circle of Willis is a common site for the formation of intracranial aneurysms, particularly at arterial bifurcations where hemodynamic stress is greatest. Knowledge of its anatomy is essential for diagnosing and planning the treatment of these aneurysms. Endovascular coiling or surgical clipping requires precise navigation of this complex vascular network allowing clinicians to plan interventions that effectively isolate and treat aneurysms while preserving collateral circulation. 
5. Monitoring cerebral perfusion Continuous monitoring of cerebral perfusion pressure during anesthesia is vital to ensure adequate brain oxygenation. The circle of Willis facilitates this by distributing blood flow from multiple arterial sources. Anesthesiologists can use transcranial Doppler ultrasonography and other techniques to assess the integrity and functionality of the circle of Willis, making real-time adjustments to maintain optimal cerebral perfusion, especially in patients with known cerebrovascular disease or during high-risk surgeries. 6. Understanding variations Anatomical variations in the circle of Willis are common and can influence anesthetic management. Incomplete circles or variations in vessel size and connectivity can alter the distribution of blood flow. Anesthesiologists must be aware of these variations to accurately assess the risk of ischemic events and tailor their anesthetic plans accordingly. Preoperative imaging studies, such as Mr. Angiography, can reveal these variations and guide perioperative management strategies. 7. Endovascular Procedures The Circle of Willis is a critical landmark for endovascular interventions. During procedures like angioplasty, stenting, or thrombectomy, accurate placement of catheters and devices depends on a clear understanding of this vascular network. Anesthesiologists involved in such procedures must manage hemodynamics to ensure collateral circulation through the circle of Willis is not compromised maintaining adequate cerebral perfusion throughout the intervention. 8. Hemodynamic stability Maintaining hemodynamic stability is paramount during anesthesia, especially in patients with cerebrovascular disease. The circle of Willis's role in providing collateral blood flow underscores the importance of avoiding significant fluctuations in blood pressure that could jeopardize this compensatory mechanism. Techniques to stabilize blood pressure and optimize cardiac output are crucial to ensure that the collateral pathways of the circle of Willis effectively protect the brain from ischemic injury. 9. Anesthetic techniques Anesthetic techniques must be carefully chosen to minimize their impact on cerebral blood flow. Agents that preserve autoregulation and avoid significant vasodilation or vasoconstriction are preferred. The circle of Willis's protective role allows for the use of certain techniques, such as controlled hypotension, with greater confidence, knowing that collateral blood flow can help maintain cerebral perfusion. Tailoring anesthetic protocols to support the function of the circle of Willis enhances patient safety during neurosurgical procedures. 10. Patient positioning Patient positioning during surgery can influence cerebral blood flow dynamics. Understanding the anatomy of the circle of Willis helps anesthesiologists and surgeons position patients in ways that optimize perfusion. For instance, avoiding extreme head rotations that could kink or compress arteries, or elevating the head to reduce intracranial pressure, can help ensure that blood flow through the circle of Willis remains unobstructed. This strategic positioning minimizes the risk of ischemia and contributes to better surgical outcomes. The circle of Willis is more than just an anatomical curiosity, it's a critical component in ensuring adequate cerebral perfusion during anesthesia and surgical procedures. Understanding its implications allows us to better manage our patients, mitigate risks, and enhance outcomes. If you enjoyed today's episode, don't forget to subscribe and leave a review. For more in-depth discussions and resources, visit our website at optimalanesthesia.com. See you next time.